Welcome to part 13 of the Intermediate Revit course. We're going to start looking at how to create a fur rug or carpet inside of Revit. If you'd like to get access to all of the course files, materials and resources, as well as four hours of ad free content, you can feel free to check out the full course on my website. I'll see you there. So now we've got the curtains in, they look great. We're still missing something. And as you can see in the center of this image, the big ass fur rug that's in the very middle of the room, that is what we're missing. And to be honest, it's quite tricky to do fur in Revit, especially when rendering any families you look for on Revit City, BIM Object, or the SketchUp 3D Warehouse, wherever you look, you can never find fur rugs. So I'm gonna show you how to create one, which is going to look just like this one here. And so we can render that out then in Enscape and that will look really good as well. To get started, what we're going to do is just create a floor. So if we create an architectural floor, we're just going to create a rectangle. If we go to the ground floor plan, this will be a lot easier. We're going to get the general shape of it. You can see that it comes out probably to about the same width as that door. And then in length goes back probably just before the couch ends and it will go slightly under the couch as well. So we can draw that in. That's the first door there. It's going to come to about here and it finishes just before the couch, just before this pole here. So you can kind of line it up to be exactly the same. And then I'm guessing it's just going to go underneath the couch like this. So we're gonna make sure that this is going onto the right level. We can put this on the ground floor plan at zero offset. The floor's in, let's create a floor type for the carpet. Gonna be able to use this for any other carpet that you want as well. So if we duplicate this, because it's just a generic 70 mil slab, we can call this black fur carpet. What we're going to be doing is utilizing the grass rendering from Enscape inside of Revit because what Enscape does is that when there is something assigned a keyword in the appearance tab when you're editing a material when it comes up with the keyword grass it's going to take that information from Revit and it's going to render out grass inside of the Enscape view so that's why you can get those waving little grass um, animations when you're creating fly throughs inside of Enscape but we're going to utilize that and then we're going to change the color of the grass to black and it's going to look like black fur carpet. If we edit the structure of this floor type, we could probably change this to something like 20 mils. And then we're going to insert a new layer and we're going to move this up above the core boundary so that this is the top finish on the floor slab. First of all, we're going to assign a thickness of 60 to this layer and we're going to change this to finish one. And we're going to then change the material and we're going to look for a grass material and this one here should be fine what i was talking about earlier if we go to the identity tab you can see that the name is grass and usually if you type the keyword grass enscape's going to recognize that this is now grass and it's going to assign grass like features to the material duplicate this so that if we have grass anywhere else it's not going to change it and we're going to call this black fur so now when we edit this, it's not going to change our other grass. Now, what we're going to do is change the appearance. And you can see at the moment, it is just a green grass. And what we can do similar to what we did earlier with the floor, which is stonework, we can actually change this materials color and we're going to make it black. And we're going to do that in Photoshop. So as you can see, there's currently a texture image linked to this material. And if we click on that link there, it'll take us to where that is. So what we want to do is right click this, go to open with Photoshop 2021. That's going to bring up this screen here. Now all we need to do is change this from looking green to black. And we can do that by going to image, adjustments, black and white. And this is essentially just turning down the saturation to zero. If we click OK, that really is all we need to do to make this look black when it goes to rendering it. What we need to do is save this back into that folder where we opened it from. But rather than just saving over it because you need admin permission to do so, I'm going to save it as, and I'm going to save this to a different place because if we try to save it in here, it's not gonna let us. I'm gonna save it to a different place and then copy that into this file. So as you can see, I've now just dropped this file into the folder um, where we opened it from, and this is still inside of Revit. And so now what I'm going to do is just select this because I've renamed it. We've still got that original one there, but we've now got a black one as well. So I might even call this something like black fur and we can use this for any project then because it's in our normal library and you're going to need admin permission to do so. 
So it's going to ask you a bunch of times whether you want to change it. And yes, we want to change this. And that's only because this is coming from your program files. So now we can open this black fur. And now you can see that it's changed the appearance of this material. So let's click apply. We're going to click OK. If we click OK again, we can see what this looks like. So we're going to finish off this slab. You're going to see that it overlaps and that's fine. I'm going to actually offset this 20 mils. This is really just testing it. We're going to have a look at what this looks like. Okay, so what you've noticed is that it's still not showing up inside of Enscape. The reason that is, is because if we go to edit the type of this again, you're going to see that we've renamed it to be black fur. And Enscape needs this to be called grass in order for it to show as grass. It's not a matter of just making the keyword grass. That's not going to change it. You need to change the name to be grass. So what we're going to do is call this grass 2 and we're going to apply those changes click ok click ok click ok and let's have a look again in Enscape there we go we've got a nice grass texture which is black and it looks like carpet and that's let's have a look how similar that looks to the carpet here this carpet looks a lot worse to be honest it's a bit dirty especially for the final photos I hope we vacuum that but um there we go we've got a carpet it could be a little bit thinner. So what we can do is go back into Revit. We can change the thickness of the actual grass to be something like 30 mils. And that will be about half as tall. We have a look in Enscape now. That should go down. There we go. Now also you can see that because we've offset it off the slab by 20 mils, which was kind of me just experimenting, it shows up the actual slab structure. We don't want to show that. So we're just going to keep this in line at zero. And then that should make that disappear. So let's have a look again in Enscape. Now, the reason why I offset that slab in the first place was because you can see that the intersecting floor slabs, you can see it over here as well. Revit doesn't like that, Enscape doesn't like that. So that's why you can offset it a couple of mils and then it won't um, show up as it's intersecting. So if I move that up five mils, that should get rid of that flickering. There we go. And that's a bit easier to see um, the carpet now in the sunlight. You can see how it's actually got some shagginess to it and it's furry and you can see it moving because it is just grass. So that's how you create a fur carpet in Revit. Pretty simple, utilizing the Enscape grass and it makes it look really nice. In the next lesson, we're going to continue creating a parametric family by creating this roller shade or roller curtain if you'd like to get access to all of the course files materials and resources as well as four hours of ad free content you can feel free to check out the full course on my website i'll see you there